Welcome to the State of Survival. How World came out of the gate with explosive numbers from the get-go. It often boasts a huge number of variable features, from crafting to farming to capturing pals, and it claims that it's an open-world crafting survival game. The pals are adorable, by the way. Freaking love them. Oh yeah, you're definitely right, Yarl. The pals are so freaking adorable. Like, the very first pal you get is the sheep. And you can use the sheep wall. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much using it as a, a wall of a defense shield. And it's just amazingly hilarious from the get-go. And it explains the mechanics quite well. For those of you who don't know, Pow World is a game where you run around and capture creatures that offer a variety of different tactics, fights, mechanics, and um, resources around the world, and you capture them with these pow balls. It is such an interesting uh, game, and it really, really took off, Jarl. Right now, there are over 750,000 people still playing it on Steam alone. I gotta say I'm surprised because when I saw the numbers initially, they're like the only game that's beaten this is PUBG when it went free to play. And I'm like, okay, calm down. Let's give it a couple weeks because I know how battle bits kind of fell off. And I'm just sitting here going, wow, awesome. Okay. And can I say your comment about the cute sheep being the first one you get? I love when you start, <laughs> you step out of the cave, and then there's a guy sitting there. When you talk to him, he's like, Oh, you're new to the island. I came here once and I have friends, but they all got eaten by the pals. And you're like, oh my God, this sounds terrible. And then you press a ridge and the pals are like, wah, 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 wah. you're like, oh God, those poor people. Oh, no, it, it, it's, it's hilarious because you have a lot of friendly pals at first. It almost tricks you into believing that you're, oh, everything's happy and everything's go lucky. And then bam, one of the pals just decimates you. And you don't know what happened. You're all like, what happened? I'm so sorry. And then yeah. you start to become very cautious. <laughs> For me, it was the glittery noise that would not shut up. Not realizing that meant it was a shiny. Seeing a giant chicken. And I'm like, oh, easy. And uh, then it looked at me and Kamehameha like right into a wall. And I, I was like, mm, nope, nope. Okay. I should have listened oh. to the hunter on the ridge. <laughs> The game has survival mechanics in it because it claims to be open world crafting survival game. And it's an interesting take on it because while we did do a video about is this survival or not on PAL World, I want to hear what you think about its survival mechanics, Jarl. Um, I feel the survival mechanics are kind of weak, but not in a sense that they're absent. I think with this game, with all of the multitasking you have to do, especially hunting down pals, I could not imagine how much of a nightmare Pokemon would be if you're sitting there looking for that one Pokemon and you're starving to death on your bike and you have to go back to town. So it's a really nice thing where they've added it as a background to where it feels like it's a need. You have to feed yourself, your pals, the pals in your town. Um, you do incur penalties like less durability to weather. It does feel like it's there, but I don't know. I'm just like, is it a survival game? I don't, I think it's barely there. It's like just hanging on the edge. Is it diet survival? It's diet survival, less calories for your intake. Oh, that's awesome. I have to say, I definitely feel that if it's into the diet survival that you often talk about. There are plenty of mechanics in there. Like when your food goes below 30, you get major debuffs to your strength, your defense, and your craft time, 20%. And when you go to zero food, you lose like 20 to 40 health per second. And if you haven't leveled up your health, you'll die quick. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also temperature mechanics and all that stuff. So yeah, I kind of agree that there are a lot of survival mechanics in the very beginning but those survival mechanics shift from you to your pals pretty quickly and then eventually after a little bit of work your pal survival becomes very easy to maintain i've seen some people post horror stories of running out of food for the pals and all that kind of stuff but i never really have ever seen a pal die from starvation it right i, I think the problem is is they're not thinking with enough murder because if you have murder in your heart and you look across the field and you see those cute little pals looking at you with their puss and boots, that's your food. Like, you just have to murder <laughs> a lot. 
and then you you have plenty. In fact, I got overburdened with meat once, and I was like, God dang, I'm gonna drop this meat because it, it's heavy like wood. Like you can't carry a whole lot. Well, I mean, you know, and if you don't want to, you know, take care of the pals to feed your other pals, you can always capture a human and take them to the butchery table. Oh, my God. I saw that on YouTube. (laughs) They captured a a thug at at the first tower that you go to with Zoe and Grisbolt. They captured, like, their thug, who had a deagle, by the way, that you don't get when you kill him. But, you know, whatever, whatever. But they t- <laughs> they captured that guy and they brought him to the butcher table and they're like, we're hungry now. And I was like, <laughs> oh no. Oh, that... But the other thing that Pal World is really pushing is the end game, the getting mm-hmm. the weapons and everything else. But before you get there, one of the survival mechanics is using your pals together. Resources, farm, harvest, or even like putting those sheep, the wall sheep, inside of like a ranch to have them passively produce wool and other materials you need. What do you think about those kind of interesting mechanics that make use of the pals, but don't necessarily force you to grind all the time yourself? I am a little bit old fashioned. I like to do the grinding. I like to go out and when I build- old folks. Yep, yep. When I go to build in my base, I like to set the beams. I like to build the beams. I was freaked out when I knelt down and I was sitting there on the hammer and my orange meter was going up. And then an army of them were like, "Ah!" and that laugh at the end when they finish the construction is the stuff of nightmares. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. The other thing they do in this game is the tech tree. The tech tree works based upon you gaining levels and you can easily gain experience by capturing pals. And if you capture enough of the same pal, you gain quite a bit more experience. Mm-hmm. But what do you think of the tech tree kind of locking ba- base building mechanics and everything else behind it when it comes to, well, progression? At first, I was a little perturbed by it. But then I watched a YouTube video and just realized I suck at the game because one guy at level five went out and was like, oh, there's a bunch of chickens. And he just multi-attacked all of them and then caught them all. And he goes, I'm going to need these for later. And he got way further in the game than I did. I didn't realize that when you go to the first tower, which is like the gyms in another title that we won't compare too much, I promise. No, uh, no. When you when you go to those towers and then you go and you kill the bosses you get the ancient tokens that you can use to unlock those special buildings and the tech tree on the side and that actually answered another concern of mine why fill your town up with all these low-level pals that are just going to be eating like crazy what's the point well there is actually a handy little device where you could take two pals of the same type, put them in a blender, and then it comes out a better pal. So it it's really cool how they've come up with clever ways to address this system. I think the issue is I'm so used to that like realism approach that I kind of had to unlock my brain. And then I appreciated the game for what it was. Definitely. I'm just a little bit perturbed about the blender smoothie pal. You didn't Picture. see the but, fusion machine as a giant ninja blender? Is that just me? Not sponsored, by the way. Nope, nope, not sponsored. <laughs> uh, the other thing I love about the pals and the tech tree is as you unlock more and more of these buildings to do, the pals don't only, uh, only just man them like they do the crafting table or helping you build. Some of the pals are actually required for you to actually use these, like the furnace, to start smelting iron or other metals. You need a fire type uh, pal that can actually make the furnace go or cooking or whatever else. So it's cool that there are actual specific cases for each kind of pal in your own base. I absolutely love it. And you spoke about bosses. The first boss wrecked me, just destroyed me. But I have seen some hilarious uh, boss battles where suddenly the boss hit them and they just went flying miles away and mm-hmm. land it safely and they're all like i think i'm outside the world bounds <laughs> I, I, I saw one boss fight where he went to fight zoe and grisbolt and he stood behind the pillar and you see half of grisbolt's face and he just sat there and he goes i'm gonna go get a beer and he came back and his little sheep killed zoe and grisbolt because oh, wow. the ai tricking tracking the boss was really trying to get him 
was really trying to get him but couldn't he was like halfway on that pillar just like you son of a you get over here i'm gonna get you meanwhile the sheep's like <laughs> it was so silly oh my gosh i absolutely enjoyed playing this game would i say it's one of my favorite survival games no would i say it's a game i absolutely love to play outside of survival mechanics actually i do and it was because they merged so many of these mechanics together where it's your pal helping you in combat. It's so dynamic. There's no turn-based situations. Right. While there are timers like in World of Warcraft with your hotbar and stuff, I still enjoy all of that. Like the fact that you can even make a harness to like pick up one of the um, flame ones and make your own flame That's exactly, you know, the that. fox one that you get early on, you were mentioning needing fire Pokemon or fire pal to light the forge and stuff like that. And to be honest... I call my flamethrower because I picked him up and I was like, ha, 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 ha. and being able to have him at my base. I don't see him as a pal. I see him as a weapon. <laughs> oh, oh, and by man, the way, pro awesome. tip to anybody out there who's on the fence about getting this game. If you get it, don't try to capture pals near your base because the moment you hit that pal with an arrow and it looks at you with hate in its eyes, every pal that you have will drop their tools and assemble. I, I felt like I was in Avengers Endgame, but instead of Thanos's army, it was just... <laughs> Thanos. It was terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. Question for our community. Given the many survival games that have been put out over the past two years, which one has stood out to you the most? Well, folks, that wraps up our segment of Power World. But if you have enjoyed, let us know down in the comments below. And don't forget, folks, Yaro, our co-host, has his Twitch link down below and streams regularly. Don't forget to thank our producer, Red Falcon, in the background for running this show. And I hope to see you folks soon. Bye!